right welcome everyone good morning and good evening wherever you are my name is himanshu i am based in stockholm and i am a developer advocate at spotify um i go on github and twitter by orco hunter and today i'm going to talk about backstage so we like to define backstage as an open platform for building developer portals in codes um it was created at spotify and open sourced almost 2 years ago uh, in march uh, 2020 since super so open sourcing it uh, we have donated the project uh, to cncf it's an incubating project cncf is cloud native computing foundation and it is home to kubernetes and envoy and other amazing cool projects but back up a second and let's talk more about this developer portal um i think it's a fairly new product category uh, so we are going to spend a bit time about um discussing what a developer portal is and what it isn't so you might have heard this phrase uh, software is eating the world well it still is eating the world um it there is an explosion of available technologies of to do a simple thing let's say logs or monitoring or in any any action that you can imagine this there's, there's so many tools that a company could be using as a result it's difficult to learn them all all of their interfaces and how it fits your stack so the company's entire stack is getting more and more complex and things like onboarding of a new engineer and collaboration across teams can get challenging so a developer portal is more than just an intranet for developers it's it's a service catalog to begin with so it's a place where you keep track of all the services but it's also an interface it's one front end for your entire infrastructure inside your organization for example tooling let's say you have cicd you have you have to monitor your kubernetes deployment you have some security tools that you use to monitor alerts you have some testing lighthouse kind of uh tool that you use to test your website's performance etc so backstage is like one front end where you visualize all these things you have technical documentation for your services and apis you have tutorials guides you have things like organization chart i'm going to demo everything uh, but backstage is really like one front end for entire infrastructure all in one place regardless of how or where the individual components are actually running or who manages them backstage lets developers focus on creating that feature they want to for their app or service keeping your business running and learning new things instead of using numerous portals and interfaces to perform that one basic task so every development shop like spotify for example wants roughly the same things we want speed without compromising safety we want scale without compromising quality and the ability to tame their increasingly chaotic software ecosystem spotify is no different if we at spotify were able to tame our chaos and improve developer effectiveness with backstage we think it could work anywhere so let's go back to 2016 spotify was in a hyper growth mode expanding from a music streaming app to a highly personalized audio experience but onboarding new engineers was becoming hyper confusing as well they were focused on speed to market yet their teams were slowing down because of internal fragmentation while the headcount kept going up the individual developer effectiveness metrics kept going down specifically there is one metric spotify keeps track for developer effectiveness it's the time to create 10th pr whenever a new person joins new engineer joins 
And that was skyrocketing to 60 days. So Spotify built this developer portal, what we now know as Backstage, to tame the chaos. And that changed everything, aligning a distributed, autonomous culture and bringing together hundreds of squads or teams, thousands of engineers, and tens of thousands of software components. Backstage at Spotify now enables better collaboration, unlocks collective potential, and empowers teams to do what they do best. So there are lots of features in Backstage, but there are mainly three jobs to be done. The first one is create. You use Backstage to create new software in seconds, which are aligned to your best practices. You use Backstage to manage all the software you own in one centralized location. And you also explore the entire software ecosystem, enabling collaboration across your organization. So instead of being frustrated by infrastructure, by numerous portals and, and interfaces, your developers get back control over it. It frees them up to focus on what they want to focus, building features in most cases. Your engineering organization consists both software and people. The global developer population will grow massively in the coming years. And we believe this is also true for your organization if you're growing. So you'll need to handle this growth of both people and complexity. Ideally, you can leverage the power of open source through plugins and the world of support that this fast growing backstage community has. Let's talk a bit about what do I mean by plugins. So backstage is powerful largely because of its highly extensible plugin architecture. Plugins are essential additional functionality to make your backstage app useful for your company. Plugins can come from anywhere, internally from your teams or externally, externally from the plugin marketplace. Plugins can be specific to a company or open sourced and reusable. With Spotify's backstage, it has been very powerful to get contributions from various infrastructure teams inside Spotify added into a single unified developer experience. When we open source Backstage, we focused on making it open to build for, and hence open platform for building developer portals. We did it so that it's possible to make it work for different organizations. You add functionality and integrations to Backstage by either adding or building plugins for it, to tackle challenges specific to your organization. We'll cover plugins more deeply later um, when we look at the Backstage architecture. But just a little peek, um, and I'm going to do a demo later on, but this is how Backstage at Spotify looks like, and this is the homepage. And you can probably spot some plugins uh, in, in the right side, but you can tailor this to your own branding your own visual likings. In fact, many developers like to call their developer portal, their backstage instance, something else, and they theme it entirely according to their um, culture. Backstage is open source, but why did we open source it? It's been at Spotify for about six years. So the teams at Spotify depended on their internal version of backstage every single day and it's still considered mission critical to the company, we believe that the best way to ensure its future was open sourcing it. Um, while the famous quote, software is eating the world is still true, software is itself being eaten by open source. So proprietary software is being replaced by open source alternatives because companies see the advantages of using open source software, like cost and time savings, efficiency, ability to influence the roadmap, and so on. Also because of this, 
traditional open source companies are playing a less critical role and open source innovations are happening at companies like Google and Facebook and well, Spotify. It can also play an important role in attracting and retaining talent. In turn, your contributions could be improved or extended by other community members, which will accelerate your organization's innovation. So that's why Backstage is open source and it's, um, it's critical to the way Backstage has evolved in the last two years that um, it was a good decision. We love these numbers. Um, we have 16K stars on GitHub. We have over hundreds of companies adopting Backstage. The interest from so many companies show us that it's not just Spotify. There's a real need for developer portals and a product like Backstage. And the continued growth in external contributions show us that it is working as a platform that will continue to scale and evolve and improve as adoption grows. Backstage is building a proven track record across industries. We're continuing to see more and more great companies adopt Backstage. Here's, a, here's just a few that are doing awesome things with it. And if you ever decide to adopt Backstage, feel comfortable sharing this. We'd love to see you in, on our public adopters list, which is on the GitHub uh, repository. Before we dive deep into the concepts, um, let's take a little look. So I'm going to share my window. All right, so this is the homepage of Backstage at Spotify. As you can see, there's this big search box to begin with. And you can search for anything ranging from services, individual data workflows. You can search teams inside the company. You can search documentation. You can search particular libraries that uh, are made available by the platform teams. And you can extend this search to basically search anywhere. If you need to integrate it with, let's say, searching across all your Google Docs and Google Forms and Google Sheets and whatnot, you can do that. We have a few uh, plugins, let's say, um, quick, quick access, the recent things that you visited. We have a toolbox of some specific plugins that we think are mostly visited. Um, we have some news and all these widgets. But all these widgets or cards come from specific plugins. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a, that this is our homepage, but every company tends to have their own backstage homepage. So if you remember, there are three main jobs to be done with backstage create, manage, and explore. Let's talk, let's see a little deeper into how create looks. So an engineer at Spotify, whenever they need to create a new, let's say, website, a new backend service, a new data workflow, a new SDK library, a new GC, GCP project, anything new, they come to Backstage and they use some standard, templates, um, nothing more than a template, which lets them create this new service they want to um, with CI CD setup, with testing setup, with monitoring setup, and so on, with cloud resources setup. So it's really very easy at Spotify to create new things and just start writing the code you want to. So this is the create page. We have a bunch of templates here categorized and maintained by their by experts of the particular field for example if you need to create a website you just choose one of the templates based on nextjs you add a component id a new website you add a description 
select which team owns it. You select where they should go inside GHE or any source code control management service you own. You do some checks like, is this handling some private personal user data or so on? Um, and you can basically add anything, any checks you want to in these templates, uh, depending on your organization's needs. You add some more details like where should it be deployed and so on. And after doing it, within minutes, your new website is ready and you can just start writing React or any new component that you want to. But Backstage takes care of making sure you don't have to worry about your organization's infrastructure complexity. I don't need to learn about Kubernetes to deploy a website. So that's pretty much it. Um, these templates, um, you create them for your, your own org, you maintain them, and these are more or less just YAML files um, for information about what should happen when a service is being created. So if you need to take some additional steps, like gather this cloud resource, like this S3 bucket or something else, you can, you can write it as part of the template. It's pretty flexible. So your template could be doing any, anything as part of creation of new services. So that's great. Let's take a look at um, the second use case, which is manage. So if you if you if you're looking at a service that you own, let's say this is the manage page of Backstage itself. So it's quite <laughs> funny. We use Backstage to manage Backstage, but this is how it looks inside Spotify. This is the overview page. You can look at some information details like which teams own it, who are who is the product manager, where's the docs for this service and some links and some other metadata, etc. Um, we have on-call set up here. Uh, if you need to trigger an incident, um, I'm not going to do so. But you can also look at when was it last deployed and so on. So this is the overview page. And it's, again, Backstage is highly focused on customizability. So you can customize this with any information that you think um, your user should be able to view when they view a overview page of service. But you can look into further details. For example, I want to check out the CICD bills of this service. What's been happening? Are, are my bills failing? Some more details like logs and so on. And if I need further details, like um, which GitHub commit is it, it is, I can just visit it directly from here can re-trigger things and so on. So that's that's CICD. I can look at deployments. When was it last deployed? We, we, we use Kubernetes here, so all clusters that it's deployed to. I want to look at some logs from individual deployments. I can directly click it and visit uh, the exact place where I can see logs. I can redeploy previous deployments and so on. So we use Baxis to deploy services uh, as well. So it's all about, again, having a single pane of glass. So let's say I want to set some secrets or like environment variables uh, inside this service. I shouldn't have to worry about what secret service are we using to do that. I can just come to one place, which is Backstage, and do all of those things. If you want to learn about um, the quality of this service, let's say I'm I'm trying I'm looking to use an internal API to create a service and depend on it. Um, we have something called Autotune where we have a lot of checks. It gives you badges um, so that you can determine how much you can trust uh, this service and how reliable this service is. So you can look at those checks here. Um, you can look at cost insights, which is pretty interesting. Uh, how much this service cost, what's been changing and so on. Cost insights is pretty great. You can also look at cost of particular teams. 
across the services they own or particular organizations across the teams um, that, are, that are part of the org and so on. So all of this information are coming from individual plugins and I hope you get the idea that Baxter is really trying to give you an a overall overview of every everything that exists inside your uh, infrastructure stack and try to reduce um, your engineers, the chances of your engineers getting overwhelmed by 12 things and 12 URLs they have to remember uh, to do their job, to debug something or to deploy something and so on. So this is manage. Um, finally, we have a manage page where you can directly go and look at all the things you own. So it's pretty handy um, to look at uh, things you own. Lastly, explore. Um, Backstage is, is the hub for all of our tech technical documentation. So um, we, have, we follow the philosophy of uh, docs like code. So we write docs like we write code. We write it alongside the code in Markdown files. And Backstage just aggregates all those documentation and shows them alongside uh, the service. So let's say I'm, I was looking at the Backstage content service. And I wanted to read more about this. So I shouldn't have to, let's say, go into this third party, let's say Confluence or something similar and search for documentation particular to this service. I should be able to find the documentation directly from this page. That's that's pretty much it, is you find everything that you need in one in one page. So we have docs, it's also an open source plugin, it comes with Backstage open source and and yeah, it's a great experience. Um, lastly, I want to show you something um, that's unique to Spotify, but I really like it. Uh, it's the concept of golden paths. So if you're if you're a new engineer, let's say you're a new front end engineer and Spotify, and you want to learn about how things work here and how to create new new websites, for example. So the front end experts at Spotify have created a golden path. So these are basically this is a tutorial, a step-by-step -step, um, direction, which lets you create a new site, but also learn about testing and like security and monitoring and DNS to expose this on a URL and, and so on. So I love Golden Paths and I think it's a great, it's, it's a great help uh, in onboarding of new engineers inside the company. So that's it. There's a, there's a lot of things uh, inside Backstage, but I don't want to overwhelm. Um, but it's a collection of plugins, and it's uh, it makes the life of engineers easy. So let me go back to my presentation. Um, yeah, I have a few more slides. So let's talk a bit more about some of the concepts inside Backstage. Um, as I emphasized, Backstage is really the source of truth for something. So one of, the, one of the core philosophies is that Backstage is the interface. It's nothing more than an ag aggregator. You're undoubtedly going to have many infrastructure tools and you want to expose all those tools through the same interface but you're not looking to re-implement all of them. So Backstage is really a single pane of glass, that single place to go to check on everything from which you can get to the other tools if you need to. For example, as I showed, if you were to just visualize about deployments and look at what clusters and what pods do I have for this service, you can do that on Backstage. But if you need to check like particular pod information and so on, there's a button which can take you to the cloud provider who are the best, um, who have the best information on that. So that's that's really uh, one of the one of the core philosophies. Autonomy. 
So at Spotify, we have this culture of autonomy. Each team is able to operate on its own and make the best decisions for themselves. So we knew that when we started Backstage, we couldn't have a big central platform team that dictates everything from the top down and implements the whole platform for everyone. So Backstage was really built around this plugin mechanism as a way for everyone to build it together. Some numbers, we have a team of four to six people managing our internal deployment of Backstage. And then there's over 150 plugins contributed from over 100 other teams who own that domain of expertise. For example, Kubernetes deployment, the team who are the best at platform deployments, um, not exactly SRE, but Kubernetes experts, they own the plugin and they manage that plugin. Data pipelines, data workflows, the teams, the data scientists and data engineers that are consisting of them, they own that particular plugin inside Backstage. So Backstage is built so that people and teams can come together and build the developer portal of their, of their company. Ownership. Similarly with the software catalog, for each piece of software at a company, we believe that there should be a single point of contact for that software. And they should be the owners of the metadata around that piece of software. The team that wrote the software should decide if it's production ready or if it's experimental, um, for example. So you should be able to declare that kind of dependencies you have on other pieces of software at the company. So yeah, ownership. The teams who own the software basically tell everyone, this is the place where we have talks. This is the Slack channel or Google group or something else where you should be reaching out if you have any issues. And yeah, so this really helps solve the problem of metadata management uh, inside, inside the company. So there's not a Google sheet or a spreadsheet where all the owners of services are listed. Um, it's quite spread out and teams manage them on their own. So Backstage sounds great, but I have 20 bazillion software components running in production and documentation spread out across Confluence and Google Docs and who knows where else. And I'm onboarding new engineers every week. Forget that. So where to start if you need to adopt Backstage? Start with the focus on that one problem you would like to solve with Backstage. We recommend starting with a narrow use case and gathering new wins, small wins as you go. Get to know the product, learn to navigate our community and sp spread knowledge internally as you go. There are a lot of features uh, to Backstage. Um, so you, you can't be uh, starting with uh, all of them. So we have this this cycle that uh, we show to adopters. And we think there are four steps to adop adopting Backstage. The first one is one of your engineers try Backstage and uh, get a feel of it. And, and then you, you kind of make a decision to go to the phase of, proof of creating a proof of concept. So you deploy Backstage inside your org. You Want, you talk to one or two teams and try to onboard them uh, into Backstage, which would mean tracking their services in the service catalog, which would mean their technical documentation on Backstage. And then you basically expand on the partnership with multiple teams, and then you try to onboard them um, and see how, how, how it feels. Try to create a few soft templates um, so that they can use the templates to create new services and so on. And then you kind of, um, when, you, when you feel like you have partnered enough with enough teams, the last phase is basically to evangelize your engineers um, onto the platform and start using the portal to do their daily jobs. So yeah, um, here's a few good places to start. Um, first and foremost, 
get involved in the community through our monthly community sessions um, on Discord and on GitHub. And we'll be adding more and more resources to uh, the backstage.spotify.com site as well. Um, we have backstage.io where you can find the actual docs um, and getting started guides and so on. Um, here's some Discord links which you can find on our GitHub page. And we also have Backstage Newsletter, which you can find on Backstage.io. And of course, as the original adopter, Spotify is here to help. So Backstage is still new, but we have had over two years of Backstage in the wild. And we've helped a lot of companies now, all a little different. And the more companies we talk to, the more we build up knowledge and experience and best practices around adoption. And we want to share the knowledge wherever we go. So yeah, we have our trusted partners who can help you get up and running if you if you need that. So head out to backstage.spotify.com and find more. Well, thank you, and I'll take any questions. And here we are live, Himanshu. Thanks a lot for this talk. Um, that was quite impressive. Uh, as we're purely focused on developer experience here, I think um, Backstage really encompasses both uh, the, the aspect of introducing a new tool that's really helpful, but also really thinking about the principles to make it work, the best practices. It's very, very, very uh, kind of well thought out uh, so quite impressive. We do have a couple of questions from the audience. So if you don't mind, Thanks, I will just yeah, absolutely. I will pull up some questions here. Yeah, that's uh, starting from the last Guillermo. Here we go. How many plugins do you have developed in Spotify for Backstage? Are you planning to open source any other core plugins than the current ones in the near future? Um, so uh, as I said, we have over 150 plugins contributed by hundreds of teams inside Spotify. So that's like, you can imagine about 500 people who have made backstage at Spotify what it is. And uh, it takes time to reach out to them. Like, hey, we have made open, we have made backstage open source and, and this is the way you can actually contribute to open source. So that's what's happening right now internally at Spotify is like folks like Devon, folks like me and other engineers who are close with other teams and collaborate with others product managers, they are basically figuring out a way in which we can externalize uh, our internal plugins, um, either via open source or either via our paid plugins program. Uh, but it takes time and, and it's a big thing. Like you have an open source software, but you also have an internal community to serve to. So it's, it's quite complicated, but we have over dozen, two dozen plugins out there and you have to maintain them as well. So it's not just the number uh, of plugins uh, that, that gets open source. So yeah, I just wanted to share that information. All right, so the topics of plugins, I think is really the one that caught most interest. Uh, CodePawn asked, is, uh, is it some kind of marketplace or all plugins? Are they out of the box? Cause it looks super crowded there. Maybe you can just talk a little bit about um, how to find out about what's available, um, how to sort through them, and just generally the, the process of looking at plugins. Sure. So we have backstage.io slash plugins, which is the open source marketplace where you can find all the plugins. Anyone is free to add their plugin over there. It's just a YAML file in the repository. And uh, we have some kind of filtering or categorization. So things like if you're just looking for plugins, which can help you with monitoring, you can find some of them over there. So we have some tags, but uh, to be honest with you, that page has is not the greatest page, uh, especially because it's an open source project. So it's not like a free company ma maintaining it. So feel free to like add search boxes and whatever, uh, but that's where you, you would uh, actually go to. Backstage.io slash plugins. So this is not a proper question, but I did want to bring up this comment. I hope there are tenants, roles, and permissions because I wouldn't let that intern play with that interface. Um, interesting point because it talks a little bit on like production mode in a larger organization. How does that actually work? Who yeah. can do what? Yeah, yeah. And, and Spotify has a very open culture. So you can technically uh, redeploy 
like I can te technically redeploy like the shuffle uh, service, but I will not. Um, but the open source backstage does come with permissions and you can set all kinds of permissions you need, like R back, A back. Um, if you go to backstage.io, you can find docs for it, which got merged this week. So yeah, luck. And then we have the question, what about keeping things up to date, maintenance, migrations? Is there anything to help with that? So there is an open source plugin called Check Insights. Um, and that plugin can basically help you with things like if you're on Python 2 and if you want to move to Python 3, I'm picking like a decade old example. But you can you can track this uh, throughout your uh, software ecosystem um, by basically tags. Uh, the teams will tell you like where they are in the migration phase. Uh, of course, migrations are happening like all around in companies, um, so that's a good plugin to um, use. Yeah. So one thing that I'm always interested in with kind of infrastructure solutions like Backstage because it's you know it's a platform. It's you you have it, and when you show it like you just did. In your presentation, it looks really, really great, but we can also imagine that this uh, integration process is a little bit painful because you're replacing some things. Could you tell us, maybe you've seen some examples with other companies, what tools are they actually typically replacing with, um, with Backstage? And what's, a, what's kind of a common process of adoption, right, in teams? And then what are they giving up on the way? Right. Um, I would like to... Uh highlight that I don't I don't think um, backstage replaces uh, your existing infrastructure tools it actually just hides them from your engineers so like you, you might have 100, 100, and 100 things that um, you use for your daily job backstage just says you like hey just use me to do that like just use me to deploy stuff to check your logs to like trigger incidents across services and whatnot um, in terms of replacement, uh, if you already have, let's say, a service catalog, like catalog of services inside your company, a registry, I think Backstage will um, replace that. But I can argue that it doesn't actually have to replace, like, the truth-wise, like, the service can still continue to exist. Backstage can just um, feed data from that service and just be your front-end. So if you have a front-end, Backstage will say come and say like you just use me uh, as your developer portal but all your backend services source of truth uh, they'll, they'll continue to exist okay i think this is a this is a great note to end this uh, part on um, backstage doesn't replace tools it just hides the tools to make developers more productive uh, at the end of the day we're thinking about developer experience here and uh, there's a, an ongoing debate about adding more tools, reducing the number of tools, making things even more complex. And uh, yeah, I think this is, uh, uh, this is a great take. Uh, we see in the comments, integrate, don't dictate. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> that's yeah, a good part value. Good. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's something that applies very much to, to uh, Backstage as well. So, um, well, thanks so much, uh, Himanshu, for taking the time, for being here with us.